A knight is an individual who serves their lord as a soldier in armor granted authority by the head of the state, such as a king, queen, or pope. In the early Middle Ages, knights were mounted warriors. During the High Middle Ages, they acted as a lesser class of nobility. In the Late Middle Ages, the rank had become associated with the ideas of chivalry, a code of conduct for the perfect courtly Christian warrior. The resources needed for horses, armor, and weaponry meant that knighthood was generally a job for the rich, and most knights came from noble families. In the earlier part of the Middle Ages, knights were seen as hired thugs, overrunning the countryside and looting villages to line their own pockets. The Knights Templar created a different model in which members were seen as monks, sworn to poverty, chastity, and obedience. The rules established by the order called for members to never retreat, surrender, or charge without first being ordered to do so. The Knights Templar originally began as members of the Poor Knights of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon, a religious military order of knighthood established at the time of the Crusades that became a model for future military orders. Originally founded to protect Christian pilgrims entering the Holy Land, one of the first founders was actually named Godfrey de Saint Omer. Chivalry and religion were mutually influenced during the period of the Crusades. The early Crusades placed Christianity and religion as a focal point in the Templars' moral code. Christian armies began to devote their efforts for sacred purposes only. As time passed, clergy instituted religious vows which required knights to use their weapons chiefly for the protection of the weak and defenseless, especially women, orphans, and churches. Their religious devotion allowed them to see breaking their vows as a fate far worse than death itself. The Knights Templar were frequently found in prayer, and they were not allowed to gamble, swear, or become drunk, and were required to sleep in common dormitories and eat their meals together. The Knights' primary duty was to fight, as they were known as fearless warriors of Christ. The order was eventually falsely accused of blasphemy and blamed for crusader failures in the Holy Land, leading up to its destruction by King Philip IV of France. In 1307, Philip ordered the arrest of every Templar in France. He accused the Templars of heresy. Specifically, they were charged with idol worship of a bearded male, worship of a cat, and numerous other errors in religious practices. They wouldn't be the first group Philip had targeted, largely to fill the royal coffers. In Paris, the King's Inquisitioners tortured 138 Templars, most of whom eventually made confessions. Many were subjected to fire torture, meaning that their legs were fastened to an iron frame, their feet greased with fat, and then placed in front of a fire, causing the victim to roast. Some of the other techniques used to coerce confessions from the Templars included starvation, sleep deprivation, and relentless questioning. Knights who confessed were sent into retirement in the order's former houses, or into monasteries, but those who failed to confess were placed on trial. Among those judged guilty was the order's last Grand Master, who was labeled a heretic and sentenced to life in prison. But the master protested, and instead was burned at the stake. In 1310, the Archbishop of Sands ordered that 68 Templars be burned at the stake. One dead Templar was even pulled from his grave so that his bones could then be burned. At the time of its destruction, the order was an important institution in both Europe and the Holy Land, and already an object of myth and legend. The Templars were associated with the Holy Grail legend, and many authors have since implicated the Templars in a vast conspiracy dedicated to preserving the bloodline of Jesus Christ. Within the lands between, there is an order of crucible knights that once waged a crusade to solidify the Greater Will's rule. They served under Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. Their beliefs were in that of the primordial power of the crucible that existed pre-Greater Will. They were used as pawns by the Elden Beast to establish the Greater Will's authority throughout the lands between by force. Once the Golden Order's religion had conquered all, the knights were no longer needed and were then exiled from their home by Queen Merica. The Greater Will, and by extension Queen Merica's beliefs, shunned the idea of any form of life pre-Erd Tree. Like the Templars, the Crucible Knights were cruelly disbanded by the ruling sovereign for their own personal gain. In the case of Merica, she desired the knights to become tarnished, to struggle as they became true champions, with enough strength to kill a god. The term Crucible can mean a challenge, or a situation in which forces people to make difficult decisions. Their encounters are meant to challenge the tarnished, acting as a forge to transform you into a champion, into the next Elden Lord. In present age, the Crucible Knights are found from Stormvale Castle to the crumbling farm Azula, as they continue to live their lives in exile. I have seen posts mentioning the Crucible Knight sitting on the edge of the abyss within the Sofria Riverbank, asking why he's there. In the distance lies the Mogwins Dynasty Coliseum. Is this his next destination? Does he seek an audience with the Lord of Blood? Remember, Mog is a direct descendant of Godfrey, 
the first Elden Lord, and the Crucible Knight's former commander. We mentioned that authors in the past had created fictional narratives of the Templars preserving Jesus' bloodline. The most popular would be The Da Vinci Code, a mystery novel written by Dan Brown. I believe this is essentially what many of the Crucible Knights decided to do, continue serving the bloodline of their former master. Let's look at where we find some of the other Crucible Knights for further evidence. First, we have the two knights serving within the inner city of Lendell, the royal capital. You could say that after America's banishment, they returned to the city they once called home. Or, they may have returned to serve Margot, the omen king, another son of Godfrey. We know that Margot once led the knight's cavalry, so he understood the benefit of having a strong order of knights under his command. Then, we have two knights guarding the Ares' hero's grave. This tomb is found on the outskirts of the royal capital thought to be Godwin the Golden's catacomb, yet another son of Godfrey. Another knight is found stationed in the Stormvale Castle, possibly a remnant of when Godfrey marched to Limgrave to defeat the Stormlord. Currently, the ruler of Stormvale is Godric the Grafted, another descendant of Godfrey and a member of the Golden lineage. Although General Radon was not a descendant of Godfrey, he was captivated by him as Lord of the Battlefield, a fearless warrior. Radon's armor is a form of appreciation to the first Elden Lord. The Golden Lion armor is said to symbolize Godfrey, the Elden Lord, and his beast regent, Sirash. Radon's fort is known as Redmayne Castle. Guarding the throne room in the plaza awaits yet another Crucible Knight, who possibly served Radon as a stand-in for Godfrey during the Great Shattering. So, it would seem that many of the Crucible Knights serve the bloodline of Godfrey to protect his lineage, similar to that of the fictitious tale of the Templars acting as protectors of Jesus' bloodline. Although the Crucible Knights are scattered throughout the lands between, they are frequently found to be working in pairs. This interestingly coincides with the symbol used to represent the Templars, which was two knights riding a single horse. Contemporary legend held that the symbol represented the initial poverty of the order, that they could only afford a single horse for every two men. Finally, the word crucible is derived from the medieval Latin terms crucibellum, meaning night lamp, and cruce, meaning cross. Together, they mean a lamp hanging in front of a crucifix. The Templar's insignia was that of a fiery red cross, and their signature style of dress was a white habit emblazoned with a red cross. While the color red symbolizes the Templars, it is also associated with the red-tinted gold armor worn by Crucible Knights. The red tint exemplifies the nature of the primordial gold, said to have been very close to nature in itself. Scientifically, if gold is not pure, over time it can become tarnished, altering itself into a reddish hue. Thank you so much for your time today, and hope you have a wonderful week.